Are there way more than 8 billion people on the planet? That's certainly what you would likely take away from this article in New Scientist or this article in Popular Mechanics or certainly this article in The Independent. What? What? How absurd, how absolutely bizarre a claim this is to garner so many articles and headlines all clearly coming from one press release. Look, they're all based on more or less the same week. What do you mean there's secretly twice as many people walking around? Where? Where are all these people going about unenumerated? I was so heated reading this, I got into one of those hypothetical back and forths you do with yourself with like a straw man to make yourself feel smart. Here, it went like this. Hey, did you hear about how there's like a billion more people on the earth than we thought? What's that? I said, did you, did you read that news piece about how there's like secretly a billion more people on earth than we thought. What? I'm completely serious. I read it in the news. Apparently there's like this new research, like this new paper that came out that said that like how we count all the people on earth is like really inaccurate and that we might be off by like a billion. Is this a real research paper or like a crackpot substack? No, it's real research. I read it. It was like science news. There was like a, a research paper, like from a journal. We, we know how much water we pump and send through pipes. We know how much food we grow. How, are these extremophile people? Do they not need food and water? No, like real people, real people, they're just rural. Like they're just hard to count because they're really spread out. And I think it's like, like mostly really poor places. Like, I don't know, maybe they use well water. Or maybe it's like, uh, maybe they're all nomads, like in Mongolia. I think they're still nomads, some of them, right? Um, okay, uh, counterpoint, Kazakhstan also still has some nomadic people, uh, and they also have like one of the highest literacy rates in the world. I'm, I'm pretty sure a person has to be known to exist before they can be hooked on phonics. Also, was this a, a like a preprint or like a press release or was it like published published? Yes, a real, let me send it to you. See, nature communication, that's one of the real ones. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna read this. But I gotta say, it just doesn't, this doesn't sound like it holds water. No, it's like, it's more so like a resources thing. Like really poor rural places can't like accurately get a count. So they, so they estimated, but then these researchers checked and the estimates were really off. I'm telling you, I've read it, I read it in two separate articles, like science articles. I'm not talking about like, I saw it on TikTok. Like I read it with my eyeballs. How could smallpox have been eradicated if there were actually way more people than we realized just completely unknown people out in the wilderness? Well, maybe we didn't really eradicate smallpox. You ever think about that? We know smallpox has been eradicated. Oh my God, why are you so prone to conspiratorial thinking? I was trying to be patient. I was really trying. This does not make any sense. We know how many people are on earth. My siblings in cyberspace, I once worked for the U.S. Census. I am completely serious. I worked as an enumerator, and I don't know how old you think I am, but there's only one decennial in which it makes sense for me to have been a participant, and it's 2020. Fresh out of college, I went door to door asking people questions. As an employee of the federal government in 2020, in Huntington Beach, California, in 2020, I would go knock, 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 Hello, I'm here from the government. I'm going to ask you several probing questions about you, who all is in this house over here, and how much money you make. It was a very bad time. I, I quit. I didn't serve out my whole term. It was so bad. I only mentioned that failed career path to say every effort is made, even under the most extenuating of circumstances, to get the count right. It is extremely important, and there's nothing unique about that to America. Most countries with any kind of functioning government do a census. Not a survey, not a sample, not a subset, a census. Like, they make every effort to count everyone. Did I mention I have a degree in urban and regional planning? I just, I am confident we know how many people are out there. What? 
an infuriating gift this is to have fallen into my lap. For once in my wretched life, I am going to make use of the degree I squandered in which I have never been directly employed utilizing. I can finally have some authority on something. I can tell someone something useful in science news. Hooray! Hooray! It's my Angela Collier moment! Well, it's my Angela Collier moment, all right? But not like in the fun, uh, dunk it on Brian Green kind of way. Uh, more in the um, science communication is hard kind of way. Because I read the articles and I was flabbergasted. I read the press release and I was baffled. I was two hours into reading the citations um, and, and work cited and all that, trying to figure out what these data sets are, who made them, how reputable these institutions are. I was about ready to plug in the ethernet cable, download all of it, replicate their analysis and provide you fine people a little good crash course into how to do geospatial raster data analysis. But I don't need to do that because the paper isn't bad and wrong. This is just a case of bad science journalism. Because when I cooled off and reread the discussion section of this paper, I found the discrepancy. I figured out what went wrong. No, there are not researchers out there like real, real academics asserting in a published paper that there are actually twice as many people on Earth. What happened was a massive drop in the chain link in the game of telephone between academic writing to pop sci internet articles. The title of this paper is Global Gridded Population Datasets Systematically Underrepresent Rural Population. That sentence doesn't say there's actually way more people. The abstract, however, is a little easier to misinterpret if you're already primed with other pop sci articles in your head. The, the key sentence of this, this implies that rural population is, even in the most accurate data set, underestimated by half compared to reported figures. This implies that rural population is, even in the most accurate data set, underestimated by half compared to reported figures. Does that mean there's twice as many people? It's underestimated by half. That means there's twice as many people, right? Well, but again, this is academic writing. There's no implication. Nothing is left up implied or that, that the audience is meant to infer. That is not how academic writing works. The only things they are stating are what is plainly written. There's, there's nothing you're supposed to extrapolate at all. Nowhere in this paper do these researchers state that there are way, way, way more people, nor do they even state that it's likely that there are way, way more people. This paper is about the, the way that the computer imaging that researchers use draw the polygons to show you where reservoirs and dams are and like how many people live around them before, during and after construction. They weren't trying to count the earth at all. What they're stating, that a popular set of tools used to estimate population, among other things, is very inadequate for that purpose if you're looking at rural areas. That's it. The only positive statement, wait, which one's positive, which one's normative? The only normative, neither. They are making a position on is the following, this whole paper. Are we ready? Here's the actual groundbreaking thing in this paper that produced all these articles. Recommendations for mitigating negative biases. The results of this study call for an improved population data collection and calibration of popular models in the rural domain. It goes on. In addition, we argue that data producers should employ also alternative population counts to enrich the data collected from censuses. In case that was too dry and your eyeballs drifted apart like a cartoon, um, they're saying uh, the NGOs and universities and government organizations that uh, put together the satellite imagery, they should do a better job at zooming in and making it a clear picture when they look at the countryside. How did 
that turn into... Well, is there an extra billion people? What if there's an extra billion people out there, huh? What, what about that? Do you want to share that article? Is that an article you want to click on and send around so that I can get a nickel in this banner ad revenue? Please. Talk about a broken media ecosystem. Holy shit. So, in case you're interested, you can go ahead and skip this next part if this is already too boring for you, but I will really quickly show you how this works, how this stuff that they're talking about, like, what the, what is this? The admittedly, annoyingly referenced in the, the press release and in all these articles, there's just this phrase over and over again, the data sets, the data sets. What data sets? What does this mean? This is how, this is how people who have the unpleasant position of arguing with climate deniers get in trouble, is that climate deniers will say, oh, the data, the data, what even is this data? And they're, they're not actually asking because of course there is an answer. You can provide them reams and reams of information over decades, but they, they don't actually wanna know. It's just that it sounds vague and they're latching onto it sounding vague. And they're saying, ah, what? Uh, maybe, maybe. So the data sets are, looks like this. It's satellite imagery. You can put this format of information into what I would probably use are one of two very popular tools for this. They're called QGIS and ArcGIS. I'm currently showing you the web version of ArcGIS because I actually don't have my student license anymore that expired. The software that, among a lot of other things, lets you look at satellite imagery and they like click on a part of it, like an individual parcel, a census tract, a state, a country, doesn't matter. And then uh, you can view a table of data that is pinned to that location. That's what this software does. So these data sets are produced by a whole bunch of institutions. The one that I am using right here uh, is one that's made by Oak Ridge, uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Hope they stay open. Um, and essentially they take a bunch of satellite data and using like machine learning and image recognition and statistics and stuff like that, they can tell like, here's where the roads are. Here's, you know, I'm gonna uh, make a polygon for, you know, a small body of water in town. Um, here's how many building footprints there are and their areas, things like that. You can do all of this manually. It just takes forever. Oh my God, they make you do this in school when you're learning how to use this program. They make you do it like manually, manually, manually. And you just sit there and you just click on all the outlines and you zoom in and you make sure whether it's inside or outside of various other boundaries. <sighs> it's mind numbing. It's such a good use of machine learning and image recognition. So now that I've lost most of the audience who was here for the thumbnail and are very bored by now, this paper is for academics in this niche field. And all they are saying is, hey, this type of satellite imagery we all like to use because it spans the whole globe, don't use it if you're looking somewhere rural. That's it. Put another way, uh, while you could, don't use a yardstick to measure the length of an ant. It's not precise enough. Well, that's boring. You can't make a headline out of that. The number of people on Earth is approximately what we all thought. Uh, the only real sort of squishy edges are extremely, extremely remote people like the North Sentinelese or the so-called uncontacted tribes in the Amazon. Most anthropologists are pretty sure that like, they know about us, like the outside world. They are knowingly opting out. That, so it's not like if you like go into the Amazon and trek deep enough into the jungle, it'll be like a land of the lost in there. Like we're pretty sure approximately how many people are out there. It's uncertain on the order of thousands, not billions. Now, if I were a financially prudent person, uh, this would have been a super good video to get one of them sponsorships from that, that company whose name I don't want to say. Uh, let's call it um, uh, uh, Dirt Information. Uh, but if I'm honest, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand the value proposition. I don't understand what they do. I don't know why you would use their service and pay money for it. Because as far as I can tell, it could be accomplished with a chart.
They say they tell you how far left or right the information is from various news outlets. But like that's that generally stays the same. The news outlet doesn't like flip-flop left right depending on the article. Like the the whole institution has a position. So so you don't need to scan every article for that. And then it also I think it also claims to tell you how factual that source is. And again, that's that's an evaluation of the whole source, not an individual article. So it's still I still feel like you could reference a, a infographic. I don't understand why you need a subscription service to tell you that. So I guess you're supposed to what read both? So then you're well surely not closer to what's true. Because if they're saying opposite things, one of them is going to be more correct, right? Like, the truth isn't always somewhere in the middle. Sometimes, someone is just wrong. Also, the person who strictly consumes, like, highly unreliable polarized information doesn't seem like the sort of person with, like, this the awareness of that fact and the wherewithal t to think that that's something that they need to change to then go out and sign up for and pay money for a service to give them a more like well-rounded news diet. I just, I don't get it. I don't get what that service is for. And frankly, it sounds like my suspicion feelers, but then again, so does literally everything else. What do I know? In 2020, uh, because I didn't keep the census gig and it was only for a few months anyway, unless you got like optionally hired on to, to keep working, which was the goal. But again, I couldn't, I couldn't crack it. Uh, I used to work as a freelance journalist in like, um, I don't even want to say journalist. I wasn't doing journalism. I, I worked as a freelance internet writer. I was mostly doing like business blogs and newsletters and like listicles for interior design. Truly stuff of absolutely no consequence whatsoever. Uh, but I can tell you with confidence, having, having worked this sort of job, the real useful piece of context that'll ground you in the news is that freelancers um are working for between one to five cents per word for the most part until you're like really really established and even then the odds of being a staff writer are pretty slim to none these days and that these freelancers write about five to six articles a day five to six 500 to 750 word articles per day. Not opinion pieces, like information, things that hypothetically need to be fact checked. A lot of institutions don't have fact checkers anymore, by the way. It took me three days to assemble this information. And it was only that quick because I'm already trained professionally in this field. I'm already very familiar with what these researchers were talking about and how they do their work. I'm, I'm not like dunking on freelance journalists. I'm just saying that like, or freelance writers of any kind. Um, it's just that uh, it's literally an impossible task to do well if it is your profession and you need to like earn enough dollars to eat and have shelter. Make of that what you will. I chose to make the beginning of this video more of like a like a gut check on on this this headline idiocy, uh, because uh, sometimes when you hear a piece of information so patently obviously untrue or wildly misleading at the very least, you can decide that you don't need to spend any time on that. And I don't know if I'm talking to you or me here, but uh, sometimes someone is so wrong on the internet, you can just move on. You don't have to, you don't have to find them and tell them why they're wrong. You can just do something else. I have to believe it's possible. Oh, and pro tip, anytime a headline is in the form of a question, the answer is no. This style I'm doing, like a, like a sideways one that's, you know, not like my usuals. Ooh, I'm wide today. Um, uh, I want to do maybe two of these related to each other spaced out, you know, amongst the regular videos, um, in a series I'd like to call How to Think Good When You Don't Actually Know Anything. Tell me if you're interested in that. So in short, uh, this thing that you probably never heard, uh, isn't true. And your previous understanding of the way that things are is still right. 
I'm gonna go finish editing that video about The Last of Us Mushrooms. Okay, bye!